Are your drawings starting to look really grainy and you're not quite sure how to blend them out and go from something like this to something a lot smoother like this? So if you guys are struggling with blending your graphite pencils then today I'm going to show you guys four different ways that you can blend your graphite pencils using really cheap objects and things that you might not think you can blend graphite pencils with to get really really smooth results. But let's get straight into the first way to actually blend your graphite pencils. And this method is probably the most common, the one that you've probably heard of before, and that is using blending stumps. So what are blending stumps? Well, what they are are basically rolled up compressed paper, as you'll see here. And what that means is it makes it really easy and really useful and suitable to blend graphite pencils. And so here you can see I've got my ball of graphite. I just shaded it in with a 4B pencil and an 8B pencil. And what I'm going to do first is just take the blending stump and lightly sweep it around the outside of the ball to actually blend it. So I just start at one point and sweep to the other side. I don't then go back and forth, I just sweep from one side to the other. Another technique you can use is circular motions. You can see here I am using little circles. You could use a bigger blending stump than this if you wanted to. Normally the bigger the area I'm actually blending out, the bigger the blending stump. So I'm just going to go ahead now and actually blend the rest of this out with this same technique. As you can see that is a lot softer and now I want to show you a way that you really shouldn't blend it out and a way that will lead you to having messy dirty results. And so what I'm going to do is just shade a bit of the 4B pencil to the side of the circle here. And so I'm going to go in with the blending stump and what you shouldn't do is do this. Go back and forth because what back and forth blending does even though it makes it softer and it does work it means around the edge where you stopped each little sort of stroke with the blending stump it gives you these little darker lines these little bits which are the start and stop points so it's not smooth because imagine if you were blending skin using this method and you were going back and forth on the skin you don't want to have loads of these little lines where you start and stop doing each little stroke with the blending stump so make sure that you don't do that what you should do is start at one edge and go to the other edge and then go back to the start not go back and forth or go in circular motions so that is how I like to use a blending stump to actually blend my graphite pencil and so the main things that I actually like to use blending stumps for are the little details because of the fact that you can get them in different sizes you can get really really tiny blending stumps that are really small for those tiny little details and then you can get the much larger blending stumps which are more suitable for large areas i'll leave links in the description to all of the materials that i'm talking about while the ones that need to be linked like the next one doesn't need to be linked it's tissue but for things like this you can definitely check them out in the description so anyway guys let's get on to the second method which is using tissue and tissue is a great way to blend graphite pencil particularly because it's such an easy thing to get hold of you have a lot of it around the house but there is a certain type of tissue that I do recommend like it you get better results with really soft you know like out of the box like tissue box tissues then like toilet roll or you know, like kitchen towels which have a lot of texture so when you're picking your tissues look for something that's super smooth doesn't have any texture any bumps any patterns on it I have got my lovely soft tissue here and one thing that you don't want to do is go in with this large tissue and just start wiping it around and blending it without thinking about how you're going to control the tissue. It's such a large area, if you aren't careful, you'll just end up smudging all of the graphite all around the circle and not actually being able to control it and keep it in the sort of guidelines that you're trying to blend, the areas you're trying to blend. So what I'm going to do is just use part of the tissue, wrap it around my finger so that I just have the tissue on my finger and use this to blend and then I keep the rest in the palm of my hand so it doesn't accidentally wipe everywhere. And so what I'm going to do is just take my finger and again go in circular motions and this is a really quick method but as you get to the edges be a bit more careful. It does lighten up the graphite a bit though because as you can see a bit of the graphite does transfer onto the actual tissue. 
So here's the finished result and again it's an amazing method for blending the graphite. That is how I like to use tissue to blend my graphite and the main things that I love using tissue for are those larger areas because it's, it is, like, you can control it, but it's easier for larger areas. I wouldn't use it for really tiny details. That's better to use, like, the blending stump or one of our future methods. But tissue is really good for those large areas you just want to get nice and smooth. And so the main thing that I actually use tissue for is skin. I use it all of the time for skin and for soft backgrounds. So if I shade a lot of pencil on the background and I just need to blend it out, then using that soft tissue really, really works. Our next method is, again, something you probably have around the house and that is cotton buds or q-tips if that's how you know them and again these are really really good because they are cheap and because they have that like cotton end to them and they're really small it means they are perfect for blending graphite so again let's see them in action but what I'm going to do now is basically the key to all of these ways to blend is use small circular motions. So I'm just going to go in very gently with all of these. You don't actually need to apply a lot of pressure at all. Just very, very soft and use those circular motions just to sweep over the graphite. Once again, I'm going to use this exact same technique throughout the whole of this circle until it is completely blended out. When you're blending, it's good to go in lots of different directions as well. So for example, if you blend using your circular motions in this direction, it can be helpful to go in the opposite direction once you've finished going vertically, for example. Just go horizontally and this will help give it a really smooth look because you're blending from lots of different angles. But that is the finished result for this blending technique. Okay, so that is how I use them, but what do I use cotton buds for? Well, I use them pretty much the, for the same things as I use the blending stumps for. So you can use either one of these to get similar effects, but the cotton buds are mainly good for detailed things. I wouldn't use a tiny cotton bud to blend a whole large area. That wouldn't be very efficient, especially when you can just easily blend it with a tissue. And so I like to use something like a blending stump or a cotton bud, a smaller sort of blending utensil. Utensil? Product? Material? tool a small blending tool with a larger one like a tissue to cover all of the possible needs that I might need it for and our last method for blending graphite is actually one that you probably haven't heard of I mean it's a really common art supply material but a lot of you might not have thought of using it to actually blend graphite as well and that is a paintbrush paintbrushes can be used to blend graphite and they're actually really really effective and can be used to get some really soft smooth results so I definitely recommend giving it a try. The brushes I normally use are normally the filbert ones, the ones that are compact and slightly flatter and firmer, not the really really fluffy ones. I find that the filbert ones give a much better blending and they give much smoother results. And once again let me show you guys how I use the paintbrush to actually blend some graphite. And so with the brush what I'm doing is I am again going to go in little circles or sweep it down, that might be a better way. So this is the final look for the circle. As you can see, it's really nice and smooth. And what's also good about this technique is you don't have to just use the brush to blend already existing like graphite that's on the paper. You can actually, say, put a bit of graphite pencil on a scrap piece of paper, rub the paintbrush in that so that it gets lots of graphite residue on the brush, and then actually just use the brush to paint on some really light values. And you can actually just paint on the graphite directly onto the paper. And as you can see, it transfers the value, so you can get some really, really nice soft shading. So this, this sort of blending technique is extremely versatile, and it's definitely one of my favourites. And so overall, the paintbrush is probably my favourite way to blend graphite pencil. I also do like using the tissue for larger areas. I think that's really, really effective and easy to do. And I do use blending stumps. And actually, I do use all four of these methods in their own way at different times. So all four of them are useful and great methods to blend graphite. Anyway, guys, let me know what is your favourite method for blending graphite. Is it any of these four that I've mentioned today? Also, what is your favourite of the four that I've mentioned? And what is your least favourite? way. If you want to see lots of real-time tutorials, make sure you check out my Patreon where you can learn to draw realistically in colour pencil, watercolours, graphite, all of that sort of stuff. 
But anyway, that is it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this in the future. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody.